Oh, I'm with my lovebirds right here. <laughs> what was the moment that you knew Teresa was the one? Oh, there was a clear moment when it happened. We were talking about the more important things. Man, it was clear. I knew exactly. I thought it was the moment when you talked about your career. Ooh, the shade. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. So today we are reviewing the season finale of The Golden Bachelor. And later in this video, we're going to see what Gary had to say in response to that salacious article that came out about him just a few days ago. So let's get right into it. But before we do, please don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. We are at 13,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support, for your love, for all of your encouragement. Y'all comments for these Golden Bachelor reviews have had me cracking up. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> Y'all are too funny, but thank you so much for all of the love. Let's get into this video. All right, so as you all know, the finale was live. We were jumping from Costa Rica back to the studio, back to Costa Rica. Right now, we're in Costa Rica, okay? And we see Gary, his two daughters, and his two granddaughters. And I thought it was really cute because one of Gary's daughters looks just like him, and the other daughter looks just like Tony. Just the perfect split. So as they're speaking about the ladies, Gary is letting them know that he told both Teresa and Leslie that he loved them, right? They told him that they love him and he said it back to both women. And his daughters are like, uh, daddy, what's wrong with you? Like, come on. And I'm yelling at my TV like, yeah, y'all better come get your daddy because he's been out here doing the absolute most. So as we see, Teresa is meeting the family first. Did you notice that when Gary was describing Teresa to his family, he described her as a businesswoman. He said she's a professional businesswoman and he also said that he felt very safe with her. That is something that Gary has said constantly throughout the season. And if you saw my previous reviews, you know that just the feeling that I get from Teresa and Gary, well, from Gary, is that his gravitation towards Teresa isn't necessarily love or passion, it's safety, it's security. But more on that later. So overall, the meeting went very well. The daughters definitely love Teresa, and you can see that they also bond with Teresa because of that loss that she went through as well. And I feel like it makes them feel comfortable, right? It makes them feel good knowing that should Gary pick Teresa, their father is able to be partnered with someone who they know understands his loss, who they know understands their loss, right? Because they experienced the same thing. But child, why did they keep showing faith in the audience during this scene? Production, y'all are messy. Leave that lady alone, <laughs> okay? Leave that lady alone. The next we see Gary, he's debriefing with the children and they ask him if him and Teresa knocked boots. And Gary's like, look, I'm not telling y'all that information. Mind your business, okay? But in this moment, just the expression alone on Gary's face, the way he answered that question, I was like, them two did it. Oh, okay, Teresa. Okay, they grown, so it is what it is. Now, Teresa's gonna confirm it later, but I didn't need her to confirm anything just by the way that Gary responded to that question, okay? So after that, we see Teresa and Gary, they're alone and they're discussing the day, and Gary makes sure to tell Teresa that he loves her. Aww. Now, if you've been watching previously, you know that it was always a struggle for him to say it. She would say it to him and he just couldn't say it back, but he had no problem saying it to Leslie and Faith. But now he's like, oh baby, I love you. I love you. I want you to know that I love you. And you know, when Teresa hears that, she just melts, oh God, oh my God, oh God, oh my God. Like that is what she has been wanting to hear this entire time. And I'm like, clearly Teresa put it down in that fantasy suite, okay? Now, I don't know if it was the sex that got Gary hooked or if it was her stock portfolio, okay? I don't know which one it is, but clearly something happened that night that changed everything. And not only is it the I love yous that are flying, it's the compliments. If you saw my previous video, I also mentioned that when Gary was with Leslie, he would be the first to compliment her, right? But with Teresa, usually she would compliment him first and then he would compliment her. Not now, baby. Now he's like, oh my gosh, you look so good. And Teresa did look cute. She had on this little zebra print outfit. I thought she looked really nice. And he's like, oh, you look so good. The compliments are flying. I'm like, okay, Gary. You see, during this season, there were little things that had me giving Gary the side eye. Just little moments and I'd be like, mm. But now my side eye for Gary is pretty boombastic, okay? 
For real. So anyways, we see them having a very deep conversation. Gary has his hands all up on Teresa's thigh, very intimate, and they're clearly more comfortable with each other. And during that conversation, Teresa says this. She says, look, it will break my heart if you don't pick me. I want to be with you. I love you. I feel like I can't live without you. But I don't want you to pick me unless you are 1000% sure that I'm the one for you. And Gary does promise her that that's what he'll do. It'll be 1000% or nothing. And it's funny because in Teresa's confessional, she's like, Gary told me that he loved me, but there's also another woman here. I wonder if he's told her that he loves her too. And I'm like, uh, he been telling people that he loves them, Teresa, okay? He was pushing Leslie up against the wall outside telling her that he loves her. He was at Faith's farm, okay, in front of her family, tonguing her down, telling her that he loves her too. So yeah, baby, he's definitely told some other people People that he loves them. You just late to the party. And watching these confessionals, I always wonder how people's families feel <laughs> when they watch these shows back. Do they feel betrayed in any way or do they just feel like, oh, it's just part of the process? I'm curious. But once again, in Teresa's confessional, she's saying that she can't see her life without Gary. She can't live without Gary. And if y'all know me, y'all know I hate when people say stuff like that. I understand like it's some people find it romantic. Like, oh, oh my God, I can't live without you. And maybe this is just for the show. It's just cute, right? It's just in the moment things that they say to add that passion. But I don't want anyone to feel like they can't live without someone, right? We need to be able to to feel complete all on our own, right? And someone who comes into our life is adding to that joy and adding to that happiness. I hope that Teresa really doesn't feel like that, okay? So now it's time for the family to meet Leslie. And as he's describing Leslie to his family, he describes her as fun, adventurous. He says that her laugh and her smile are infectious, very different from the way that he described Teresa. But everyone is super excited to meet Leslie. And for this meeting, the granddaughters take Leslie aside for that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it's such a cute moment because in the granddaughter's confessional, she's like, look, yesterday we were so on Teresa like we were like Teresa was it but now after meeting Leslie it's like Teresa who <laughs> and it's to the point where they were emotional about it like they were crying with Leslie it was so cute you can tell that they really bonded with Leslie but here is where in my honest opinion I don't know if it's production or Gary but I feel like this is a scene where they try to trick us into thinking that this is what caused the downfall in the relationship between Leslie and Gary. But I don't think that this is really the moment, but let's talk about it. So the daughters asked Leslie if she wants a proposal from Gary and Leslie is very vulnerable. She lets them know that she had two previous marriages and the thought of till death do us part, it does scare her, but she says that Gary makes her feel very comfortable and secure and she does want that with him. So when the daughters go to sit down with Gary and tell him about their discussion with Leslie, they question if Leslie is emotional because she's nervous about actually getting engaged to Gary or if she's just nervous to marry Gary, to be with him, to have this till death do us part relationship with him. And to me, that was kind of strange because I do understand the daughters, I guess, warning Gary that maybe Leslie isn't ready for this, but I don't feel like Leslie was coming from a place where she wasn't ready for it. I feel like she was just being honest and telling them like, yeah, it's, it's scary, right? It's a scary situation. This is a surreal experience in and of itself, right? And this is a lifelong commitment. I feel like those sentiments are completely normal, but I also feel like because Gary already knew that he was picking Teresa at this point, production or Gary, I don't know, maybe both. They used Leslie just being vulnerable to kind of flip it. Like, oh, maybe she's not sure. Maybe she doesn't want to get married. And that's why Gary's going to go with Teresa. But I feel like Gary already knew that he wasn't picking Leslie before this entire day. Child. And then next we see like the most awkward scene. This scene was so awkward. I felt so uncomfortable watching it. And I'm sure you did too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So something is clearly off between the two. Leslie can tell. And then when they're saying goodbye, Gary says, give me a big fat hug. And I was like, did he just friend zone her? It was giving Barney. I love you. You love me. Like it was giving platonic. <laughs> it was giving very platonic the way that he said goodbye. Whereas before they would be kissing. There would be all of this passion. Now you talking about give me a big fat hug. Like, what is this? I was like, Leslie, it ain't looking good for you, sis. And I feel like in that moment, she knew. 
So now it's time for their late night date, okay? And Leslie is still nervous about Gary's demeanor from earlier during the day. So she brings it up to him and I like that because I feel like a lot of times we'll know that something is wrong but no one wants to rock the boat, no one wants to say anything. So I really like that Leslie was vocal about how she felt and she confronted Gary about it. And you know Gary, he's just apologizing, he's saying it's stress, he has a big decision to make. All of these things are true but I feel like he was leaving out something very important, right? And he tries to blow it over and he's like, okay, let's just start fresh. They toast. Leslie gives Gary the cutest little scrapbook gift and it has pictures of pivotal moments during their relationship from their first kiss. Just, it's really cute. And then she says it has a bunch of empty pages for them to fill up with the rest of their lives, right? And I thought that that moment was so cute and then it got awkward again. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't take any more of this. I, to be honest, can't imagine being without you now. Mm. That's huge. And I guess in looking for things to say, Leslie tells him, I can't imagine my life without you. And then Gary says, is there anything more that you want to tell me? Is there anything more that you want to say to me? And I'm like, Gary, what, what do you want her to say? And I can only imagine how Leslie felt in that moment because it's like, you know, what more can I do? What more can I say to show you that I want to be with you, that I love you? Clearly, I'm falling short in some capacity because things are awkward. So you asking her, is there anything more that you want to tell me? I felt like Leslie almost felt like, you know, he was dangling a carrot in front of her. What, what more do you want her to say? And I felt really horrible for Leslie during this scene. The audience felt horrible for Leslie during this scene. It was just, it was really hard to watch. It really was. And then she says, I love you. And he doesn't say it back. And then they're kissing. And then he tells her, be happy. I'm like, just get this shit over with already. If you're going to break up with her, just break up with her. Honestly, I don't know what the contract is, but if I was Leslie, <laughs> I would have broke up with him. <laughs> if I was Leslie in that moment, I would have broken up with him because now you're playing games. I'm trying to ask you what's wrong, what's going on. Is there something that you need to tell me? What's the deal? And you you talking in riddles like, okay, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Cut the cameras. We're finished, okay? And while I was watching this, I'm like, am I feeling this way because of that expose article that came out or not? And I had to really sit and I'm like, Expose article aside, and we're going to talk even more about that later. I just don't like how Gary handled Leslie, right? Especially during Costa Rica. And Leslie's going to speak on this more, but I feel like Gary did a lot to make Leslie feel like she was it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, Gary says, okay, well, I think it's time for me to go. And Leslie says like, is there something that you want to tell me? And he's just like, no, I'm stressed. I have a big decision to make, you know, the same stuff that he's been saying over and over. So he leaves the room and I'm like, <gasps> girl, he didn't take the scrapbook. He left the scrapbook. Oh, that's not good. So child, next we see Leslie, she's in the room. She's crying because she knows that this is over. We see Gary, he's on the stairs crying because he knows that he needs to tell her that this is over and it's just a mess. But eventually Gary does go back into the room and he tells her, he says, look, I have fallen in love with Teresa and that is the direction that I'm going in. And I was like, well, damn. I appreciate him telling her and not dragging this out for another day. But when Leslie started to go in on him, I was like, yes, drag him. <laughs> drag him, okay? And Leslie's like, so everything that you've been telling me was a lie. And he's like, no, it wasn't a lie. She's like, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a lie. And he's like, no, but the things that I said, I meant it in the moment. She's like, no, you lied. And her saying that leads me to believe Gary told her definitively that he was gonna pick her. And obviously we have no proof unless Leslie comes out and decides to change her mind and tell us things that Gary actually said, because I don't think that she's saying that he lied about loving her. I think that she feels that he does love her and that he wants to be with her, right? I feel like the things that he was saying to her behind closed doors were a lot more concrete than just, I love you. And of course, Leslie is so torn up. She's beating herself up. She's saying, oh, look, I didn't get picked again. And he's like, don't think that. And Leslie says, I can think whatever the I want. Yeah. Right now, I'm heartbroken. And I was like, period, okay? Yeah, let her feel. Let her go through these emotions and don't downplay her emotions because you know why she feels like this. You know what you said to her. So you should fully understand why she feels the way that she feels. You've contributed to that. And the audience is cheering for Leslie and she's keeping her foot on his neck. She said, you said things to me that made me feel like you chose me. You led me down a path 
Then you took a turn and you left me there. Leslie is clearly blindsided by this entire breakup. I feel like Gary was love bombing the hell out of Leslie. He was probably doing a lot of future faking with her. And she said, it's just mind boggling how you can love me. And then 12 hours later, you're breaking up with me. But I said, look, if this expose article is real, it does track. Because just like how Gary did Leslie, it seems like Gary will fill your head up, have you pack your life up, move to another state, and then break up with you, kick you out, and tell you go stay in a hotel, okay? I'm, I'm just saying, if the article is true, it tracks with how Gary is acting now, okay? So now we're back at the studio, Leslie is on the couch, and she's talking to Jesse, and she's just telling him how confident she felt in this relationship, especially with him meeting her family, her meeting his family, and all of the things that Gary was telling her. Now, I was rocking with Leslie, okay, until she said that she wrote her vows, and the next day, she had went out and bought herself a $60,000 dollar wedding dress i said um how how much how much was this dress baby did y'all see kathy was like what <laughs> next we see gary he comes out leslie does get up she gives him a hug and i felt like gary was a little touchy-feely in this scene i'm like is he engaged to Teresa? touching on leslie like that no man <sighs> but leslie takes this moment to just remind gary of all of the things that he told her and she says there are other things that you told me and I won't reveal here because it was private it was personal but you know what you said and you said things that made me feel like you were picking me and during the scene everyone just feels horrible for Leslie and we believe her okay even without hearing the things that Gary said behind the scenes even in my other review I said with all of the stuff that Gary was saying to Leslie I was like oh he's laying it on thick if he doesn't pick Leslie this show is a joke. I literally, I literally said that because the way that he was speaking to her, you would think that he was picking her. And I don't think the problem is Gary loving both Teresa and Leslie. I honestly don't think that that's a problem. I do believe that he felt love for both of them, but in different ways and for different reasons. But I think that doing a process like this and you know that you can only pick one, maybe hold off on all of the promises that you were making. Maybe hold off on all of the extra stuff that Gary was clearly telling Leslie until you actually propose. And then you can pour it on. You get what I'm saying? But I feel like he was doing that way too early in this experience. So Gary is just apologizing. He's just apologizing and Leslie says, you know, I don't know if I accept your apology, but I understand it. And I understand her not accepting his apology. <laughs> like, I get it, okay? And then Gary keeps talking. And it just gets worse and worse, okay? You were the person I believed was my person until I suddenly knew you weren't. And he says things like, it was you until it wasn't. He says things like, it was just better with someone else. And I'm like, Gary, shut up. You're not making this any better. Did you see Ellen roll her eyes? Ellen is so over Gary. Ellen's been over Gary because if you remember the night when Gary broke it off with her, then he was, you know, giving her the speech. Oh, you're a great person, whatever, whatever. Ellen was like, okay, I, I gotta go. Ellen was like, I have to get out of here. I rewatched Ellen rolling her eyes like five times. <laughs> So anyways, child, now we're back in Costa Rica for the proposal and I have a confession. I was honestly hoping that Gary picked no one. I just wanted these ladies to go on with their lives with their newfound confidence, with their newfound freedom and just like find someone else. <laughs> and I almost got excited because when Teresa started giving a speech, I was like, oh my God, is she about to break up with him? Is she about to pull a Zeneb from Love is Blind when she was about to get married to Cole? I got really excited. But as we know, that is not what happened, okay? She did a beautiful speech. And then he did this long, dramatic pause. And it was really funny because I was watching Jimmy Kimmel after and Jimmy Kimmel called, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel called him a psychopath. He was like, who would do something like that? Only a psychopath would do something like that. But I also watched another interview later and Gary said that the pause, the actual pause was not that long. It was just editing that made it seem like super long and dramatic, but it was nowhere. It was not that long at all. He said he said it right after. Okay. But anyways, he does get on his knee. He says that I love you 1000% and I won't stop believing because you know, that's the song that played on their first date. It was a cute proposal. They looked super happy. And then Gary went ahead and gave Teresa the golden rose. So next we see them, they come out to the studio, they're hand in hand. Teresa looks great. 
Okay, I I love Teresa's dress and the fact that she was wearing a white dress, I'm like, is she are they about to get married? Because Jesse has been hinting at this surprise for the entire episode. So when she came out in a white dress, I was like, are they about to get married on stage? But that's not what happened. But I think that Teresa looked really nice. So Jesse with his messy ass, he says, Look, I gotta know what happened in those fantasy suites. I, I have to know. And Gary says that they just had the deepest conversations and they did so much bonding. And after he was done bullshit and Teresa was like, I'ma let you know, okay? I knocked his boots off and I was like, <laughs> no, Teresa, not in front of the grandbabies. Don't say that. <laughs> And I had a Kathy moment where I was like, girl, zip it. Oh my goodness, child. But like I said before, that pretty much went without saying. I was not surprised to find that out. So we learned that the two of them are back to their normal lives. They don't live together yet, but they say that they spend hours and hours on the phone every night. They have those cute conversations. You hang up. No, you hang up. You know, and finally, Jesse lets us know what this big reveal is that will change Bachelor Nation forever. And he says, you guys have been gifted with a trip to Italy. And I was like... Is this how they do it on The Bachelor? Because as some of y'all know, this is my first time watching The Bachelor. I'm like, if this is the big reveal, this is pretty boring. But then Jerry says, oh, well, that will make a great honeymoon because we're getting married as soon as possible. So they're getting married on January 4th. It's going to be live. It's going to be televised. And you know I'm going to be watching it, okay? So I guess congratulations. I did see a lot of comments saying that it was very suspicious that they were in such a rush to get married. Now, I don't know if the rush is on Teresa's part. I don't know if the rush is on Jerry's part. I don't know if they want to capitalize on this hype, right? So they're like, let's get married now. Let's do the special. Let's get some, let's get paid. Hello, I'm not mad at that, okay? Or maybe it's just like, hey, we're grown, grown. What are we waiting for? Let's just get this done. Tell me your thoughts below. But at the end of the day, all we can do is wish them the best. Now look, I watched a couple of interviews that Teresa and Jerry did after the finale and after that expose article came out. And when asked about the claims made in the article, this is what Jerry and Teresa had to say. Which parts are not true, and why do you think Carolyn is coming forward now? The timing is a, su is a bit suspect, but the reality is I, I haven't really given that a whole lot of thought. I know what the truth is. Teresa knows what the truth is. Mm -hmm. We're more interested in the right now than looking back on some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't deserve any more attention than that. So as you see, it seems like they're both taking the route of paying the article dust. Jerry did not confirm or deny the claims. He pretty much just said he's focused on what's going on in his life right now and he's not thinking about the past. So take that how you want to take it, okay? I just want to say thank you all so, so, so much. Y'all have made my first time watching The Bachelor so much fun. Y'all are hilarious. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving me insight on things that happened during the season and on other seasons of The Bachelor. I really appreciate it. And I think I will be back for the next season of The Bachelor as well. So make sure that you are subscribed if you have not already. Hit the notification bell so that you are made aware every time I post a new video. And check out some of my other content because if you like this, you're gonna love everything else. All right, let's get down and talk about it. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye. 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 Bye.